Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War unification casts this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a 3 vs 3 on Copericus. Playing on the northern side as the Chaos Demons, we've got Mr. Nursepeak. We've got Dimdol playing as a Renegade Guard and West Griffin 13, also playing as a Renegade Guard. And playing on the other team, we have got JR playing as the Night Lords. We've got Kaiku playing as Night Lords as well. And we've got Vrax playing as the Far Sight Enclave. It's very exciting because it's the first time we'll see you know, the Far Sight Enclave play. Also, the first time we'll see an older kind of faction playing in the game. And it's also the first time we've all seen this map as well. So I, I don't know whether they've added new maps to uh, the Unification patch or whether it's one that we've just never seen before. But just look at this beautiful sunny oasis. It's like we're in the Caribbean if you just ignore the large Hulk King <laughs> blooming Titan dead in the middle. But we've got relics on three different points here. One to share between the two Night Lords over on this side. One to share between the two Renegades over yonder. And we've got one to fight over between the forces of Chaos Demons and the Farsa Enclave. I do believe that these guys have gone for... Yeah, you've gone for the Shogun. And you have gone also for the Shogun. Okay, so no proper renega Renegade play today. I'm quite excited to see how Vrax pulls off the Farsa Enclave. So if you're not familiar with how these guys work, essentially they don't really have any recruitment buildings. You send forth some heroes. They come down Orc transports. And then they're able to then bring on another Orc transport that brings forth little dudes. And you'll notice that if, if uh, Commander Farsight here throws down face down, there we go. You'll notice that the economy goes up a little bit. Um, you don't, you, this is the only way you can get green money is if you bring forth an Orca. So actually the idea is to bring one down, let it sit for a little bit, and then summon your troops. So the longer you're able to delay your own troops, the more economy that you have. But it's very interesting. I, I tried to play a game with the Farsight Enclave the other night and it did not go very well. Thankfully though, Vrax was there to explain mechanics to me. I do know that when you upgrade your listing posts, they are a lot cheaper to upgrade, but they don't give you any more economy. So, as that's taken into account. Commander Farsight going in, slapping around this warp signature. Now, Chaos Demons have been changed a little bit in the sense that their uh, lesser demon portals than their great demon portals give them more squad cap. So they have to spend less money on building up their bases so they can free up some of their economy to buy more demons. And their actual great... Well, not the great... Well, I suppose, yeah, their great demons now cost relics to build up. And also their lesser demons have some extra bits. The Nurglings got a bit of a slurp and all that stuff. And I'll, I'll go into more detail with it in another video. I do have a video coming out for the weekend where I go through the three biggest changes, in my opinion, for each of the older factions, which uh, the Laughing Max has done a really big video. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below if you're interested. Or I can wait for mine. Or watch both, because that's what that's that's what real people do. Yeah, come on, Farsight. Quite a beast of close combat, although... Considering that he is a Tau, he is a lot more durable in close combat than most Tau, but he's still a little bit fragile when not supported. we we'll see a Herald of Corn come out and show him the back door as everyone runs away. Patrol team quite low on health, but they are able to get things like spotters, gravity inhibitor drones, ion rifles, and rail rifles. Also got some wave vast squads coming out, able to get pulse rifles and pulse carbines later on. Also pretty decent in close combat and range damage as well. Over on the southern side, we do see the Takaran Warriors. And also, oh, well, we haven't seen you before. The Eternal Shogun, shining bright and purple, slapping around things. She slaps, she taps, does all sorts of stuff to this listing first. And are we seeing any? There we go, Night Lords, Ready, Willing, and Vince Cable. Double Raptor squads ready to go in and sort some shenanigans out. But actually, a third squad, one from Kaiku, a couple from JR. Nice surround on these guys as well. It does seem that the Eternal Shogun gives them a AoE buff around them. In fact, actually, while we're here, because we're still learning how this mod works, what mod do you... Or uh, what... Oh, that... Jesus Christ, that's a lot of reading. Hold on. Ah, so after reading that mammoth of text, it doesn't actually say what that buff does, so if you can read it and find it, then please, by all means, but I can't seem to understand. But she's ideal against commanders, from what I understand, so there we go. And we'll also turn that text off, because I know a lot of people don't like a wall of text appearing every five seconds. There we go. That dude's dead. Having a great old time. But the regular Takaran Warriors have been scared off as the Raptor squads come in for a slice. Also, Captain in there as well. So she's going to have a bit of a bad time. Over here, the Fast Enclave have been pushed back. We are seeing, oh dear, full blown squad of corn bloodletters coming in. We've got some friendly furies. So, demon on demon action. When the bloodletters slap down a boy, it does slow them down a little bit. I'm all seeing Commander Aracon coming forth 
So if you imagine that Commander Farsight is good at dealing damage to single entities with a sword, whereas Commander Aracon is more of a ranged AoE damage -y kind of dude. Yeah, these guys will slap me and slow you down as well as also regen some of their health. But they are seeming to die pretty quickly. Got a couple of Terracon warriors coming in as well as a Hell Talon from Kaiku, so quick tier two from him. Provide some firing spot. Ideal against the Bloodletters, as they've got no ranged weapons to take care of them. But the Breach team... Oh, well, well we've got a Breach team, never mind. The Breach team looks very similar to the um, other capping unit that the uh, Fast Enclave have. These guys will be good for blasting people back, although it doesn't seem like their shotguns have a knockback at the moment, so these guys are going to be dead pretty quickly. Pretty quickly indeed. Or unless the Bloodletters... Maybe I've got, like, a buff to them to... Oh, dear, dear, look at the speed on them. Yeah, maybe they've got like a, res a resistance to knockback. A second breach team coming forth. This commander fast that has been taken down. Very unfortunate. So that means as well that when you lose the commander for the fast enclave, it does also reduce your recruitment capacity as well. When Archon trying to retreat from the Herald of Corn as he takes down another member of the enclave. And slow but surely, even with the Hellblade and Hell Talent. Uh, supporting fire. We are struggling somewhat. Hellblade being different from the Hal Talon in the sense that it's basically a smaller, cheaper version that's more or less designed to be against other aircraft and stuff. That is my understanding of it anyway. These guys activating their power buff ability as one Raptor Scout gets taken down. Stabbed. Oh, I should know you're not being stabbed, you've been shot a million times. Sent back to the sin bin. I'm going to see the fire base upgrading itself. Yeah, you see what I mean? It's, it's 75 blue and 15 green, so remarkably cheap for a defensive upgrade, which I do believe that the Fast Enclave definitely need with their lack of being able to recruit new people when their commanders are down. But like I said, the Grey Vassa are relatively all-round, good in close combat and at range just off the bat. But they will be chased around by the Takaran Warriors. Thankfully, now these double fire bases have been upgraded. Some shooting bits will be happening. Hell Talents and Hellblade are inside the Chaos Demon base, blowing it to smithereens. A Ebon Guy squad on the way for the demons. And have they, have they got new artwork for all the little, little uh, thingies down here? But have you got a new... No, no, the, the UI is still the same. And I, I can't quite tell. You know, it's, it's weird. You, you think you'd be able to remember it, but you can't. You know, my memory is not that good anyway. Anyway, Orc Transport is here, so another era is on the way. Are seeing the Eternal Shogun with a library of text coming forth. But now that they've got some shooting bits on this listing post, the Karin Warriors are going to die pretty quickly. So they are not going to be pushing too far ahead. But a terror squad from JR arming themselves with some plasma guns. They're getting 12 members in a terror squad. Which, oh, what is it? Is it the Chaos Space Marines the regular one? I feel like it's like nine. Is it nine you can have in the squad? Or is it ten when you get a aspiring champion? Again, I can't remember. Cannot remember. Got some Striker Sentinels. That come out just straight up with a missile launcher on their back. So ideal for countering um, enemy armor, especially with their quick firing rate. Here comes the Grey Vassa squad. And yeah, they don't seem to be all that accurate against infantry. But they only need a couple of shots to take down Grey Vassa. Do have the Ebon guys throwing down some shadows. Oh my goodness, it's like Heart of Darkness. Quick, someone save that kid's dog. Arm yourself with an electro cannon. And a colander. Is that what they call it? A colander on the, on his head? It was saving Max. I remember that game. That was a damn good game. Gosh darn it. It was the first ever game I played on the PlayStation. But first ever video game I ever played, believe it or not. And yeah. Having, have, I've had nightmares ever since. But the Terror Squad, they're going to be running away from these guys before coming back to protect this fire base. Evan guys throwing some stuff in there. Naturally good against vehicles, buildings, and aircraft. But can be upgraded with purple horrors, green horrors, and red horrors to be good against everyone else as well. Got a Ballista Maiden squad moving on over as well. Don't know how Terror Squad is going to win in this scenario, but they have forced the demons back at the very least. We'll need some support from this Dreadnought coming forth. Is arming itself with a twin-linked auto cannon. That's triple sentinels with triple rockets. Do have Commander Aracon. Looked like he was about to jump. 
There we go. Going for a big jump. Provide that firing support. Does also have an ability where he's able to explode everyone around him as well. I made the mistake of thinking that that was a long-range attack, but it wasn't. I killed half my army the other night with it. Gonna be careful with it. Here comes more blood letters. The terror squad doesn't mind a bit of Arjibaj in close combat, but not nearly as much as blood letters do. This is their bread and butter. This is what they enjoy doing in their spare time. It's a, some would say a bit of a hobby of theirs. Here come the hell talent and his little wee baby friend coming on over. And if they could focus down the strike of Sentinel or two, I mean, that Dreadnought seems to resist their incoming damage quite nicely. So whether that's just like, I don't know, maybe it's more to do with like anti-aircraft or something. I suppose it is pointing upwards. It does feel like it should be more anti-aircrafty. But the hell of can't. In fact, actually, the uh, Night Lords. Oh no, the, the Terror Squad over here is running away. It's just a new captain, Kaiku. Oh no, you're not. A you're not a captain. You're the Talon Master, the Master of Talons. Stabbing away. And the Sentinels have gone down. Anorka bringing forth a Crisis Heavy battle suit, remarkably good with its double little Gatlin gun tings on the sides. Also love the Dark Magos coming forth. To repair some stuff. We'll saving every scrap of income. Back over here. Once more again into the breach. Eternal Shogun spinning around this Havoc squad. Having a bit of a difficult time against that. Morale being broken. A lot of these Takaran warriors got the Ballista Maidens on the back lines. Slower firing rate, but longer range by the looks of things. Lost to a fair bit of damage. Listening person could take it down as the Eternal Shogun throws one more Havoc to the ground. And the decapping is on the happening. And at the moment, what well, we've got a Sorcerer over here, but not much else for JR to play with. As the Tau now are starting to build up quite a decent firing line. Got Commander Shavastos. Lots of named characters, I assume. My knowledge of Tau lore is non-existent. I'm running on the assumption that they're all... Much loved and well respected members of Tau knowledge or something. Yeah, keeping that distance away from anything at the moment. Also got a TX 42 Piranha Skimmer. Taking care of business on the left and flanks. Push going inside of JR's base at the moment. Going to see another Havoc squad. The artillery from the Griffin Thunder Mortar is on the way. And JR look, looking a little bit worse for wear here. Might need some supporting actually coming on. And here we go. JR is actually bringing some troops back over. So that, he did have an army. It's just that he was coming over to support the town nonsense. Dreadnought tanking on the damage, keeping the distance from them as the Tau bring forth the Orca for more additional economy and stuff. Havoc Squad doing what it can. I don't see, was that, that Griffin Mortar just kill its own men there? I respect it. I mean, it is a Renegade Guardsman squad or, or vehicle. Lining grenades, or terror grenades even, for the Takaran Warriors. Reducing their accuracy to basically nothing. Also breaking the morale as well. And speeding along to engage in mortal combat as supporting fire renders them dead and sad. And the last of the Havocs are gone with them. So not nearly enough to really take care of them at the moment. That's a scout squad there. Oh, and there we go. Ancient Juggernaut. Juttering towards whoever you were. You're dead now. But dead as well itself. Blitrate squad, Kaiku. Which be much appreciated against all this vehicular nonsense. Predator as well out for him. And the Ebon Geists. Is that a black hole that just thrown down? That can't be pleasant. Can't be pleasant at all. And the Atramenta. No ranged alternatives for these boys. They get involved. Shredding people with their claws. Down over here. Palace of Night is the last thing on the field at the moment. Here comes the Telemaster of a Raptor squad. As well as some friendly Havocs. But oh no. Oh dear. Losing a player there. So it's now a 2v3. We do have quite the decent push going on over here, though. 
So it might end up being a 2v2. But not quite being able to resist the oncoming onslaught from the Shogunate here. Raptors as well struggling. Or not, not Raptors, your Havocs. Just because they're Night Lords, Mr. Landshot, doesn't mean that they're all Raptors. Come on, get him. He's not having a great time, is he? Been taken care by that. Are you wearing thigh highs? Effectively thigh highs. Effectively thigh highs. You're a character. You are a 10 gun general. Fair enough. If you can't wear pretty socks on the battlefield, where can you wear them? That's what I always say. And I'm fairly certain that's what Sun Tzu said as well in The Art of War. Another Orca transport. And that's one benefit that the class Enclave have. They could just summon things into the battlefield as and when they need them. As long as their commanders are alive. Got the Thunderbolt Saber going forth with its mighty array of firepower. We'll also charge straight in. Doing a bit of damage to that Predator. And the old Banzai into his flanks. And it does seem that the Chaos Demon player he is going to go down. That's put on a fair few warps. Interest everywhere. I rebuilt the area, rebuilding a warp gate over here. So not exactly a 2v2 at the moment, but is effectively going to be that for a little while. Although it does seem that West Griffin 13 has managed to capture all this gubbins on this side as well. So will benefit them greatly in the economy department. But speaking of the economy, it's currently 47 and 0, 85 and 79, 109 and 6 compared to 189 and 79. And 76 and 0. So, there. Do with that information what you will. Do with that information what you will. Because I'm not entirely sure what is good economy for the slumming uh, enclave or not. West Griffin just really pressuring all sides of the map at the moment. Seeing a Predator and a Hell Talent striding on over. Seeing if they can at least prevent the spread of weeaboos across this beach. Oh my god, it's an anime beach episode. That's what this has become. The Ta Takan Warriors can't tie up a Predator in close combat. That's not how that works. It's got a flamer on it. But the Tengu General is still there. I imagine she does stuff. Nefarious Deans, indeed. I've seen the Rogaldon battle tank being bolstered by supporting infantry. And it does seem like the assault is going to continue from this side of the battlefield. Got plenty of blue money to spend. And some blue nonsense as well. Being fired on in. Oh, is that just constant? Is that just a constant? Oh, there we go. The second I thought that was just like lots of little blue bits. But no, that was one one singular blue bit. I've just been narrowly avoided by that Rogaldon battle tank. Thunderbolts and lightning. It's very frightening over here. As the Tekkan Warriors we saw some, we saw some actual lightning there, but don't know where that came from. Have a squad and the sergeant, being pest and bothered by all manner of renegade nonsense, and they're not standing all that well to the might of the melee that these guys and girls bring. Got Demicus or Des 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 Decimus? Is that how you pronounce that? Either way, he's not having a great time. He's going to run away as best he can. And the push over onto this side, not working out in favour of the broadside assault battle suit. Because that dude, he's got powerful fists to clap some cheeks with, but also some rockets on his back. So should he need to take and hold a position, he has got a ranged option as well, which is actually does quite a fair bit of damage as well. But <laughs> just look at the way he walks. Oh, I can tell by the way he uses the walk, he's a woman's man. Just that swagger. What was that song by Cher Lloyd? That swagger jagger song? You should get some of your own. God, that was a blast. From the past. Late 2000s, I do believe that song came out. That's when I was in the club. Anyway, what's going on here? So, essentially, it's... I mean, the, the, guy, the guys on the northern side, all they have to do is just chill out. They've got all the time in the world. They've got the extra economy from this side of the map. And they've got plenty more arcs of attacking opportunity. I mean, over on this side, yeah, okay, fair enough. The Night Lords are hemmed in in the corner. But they've got plenty of 
listing post for them to claim for themselves. Plenty of tsunami tanks as well to fly across the battlefield. Not necessarily fly, more hover. But Kaiku is, is seen, right? Okay, Tower, you're going to have to fight this one on your own for a little bit. Now I'm going to come down here. Now what are the demons doing? The demons are... Yeah, you're not really in it to win out at the moment, are you? Yeah, 35 blue. You're basically shit out of luck unless you get money donated to you. And that's the only real option you've got for yourself at the moment. Talonmaster is back out with a predator friend. Oh, and what are you? Grey Spectres. And you just stand there menacingly in the air with jetpacks. Fair enough. That's what you do. And you're good against infantry. And you fly. Mobile assault squad. Oh, I see. So you, I thought they were going to come down here to do some nonsense, but I mean, with all the yes, uh, Shogunate for what's your name, but Dimdol on this side, then Night Lords, well, they could just play a bit dirty and a bit cheeky. So they're about to teleport in. Limited squad comes in, as well as the Atramenta. And a quick zapping on the Thunderbolt Zero. And the Atramenta can go to work very quickly. Tear down most structures. Or most of anything, really. And what are you going to do? Ah, they're going to come straight back. Scared that they're going to lose bits and bobs of their base. And there we go, the... Vehicle Bay has been taken down. It Shogun's Shadows Damocles Command Rhino also been sliced open. Striker Sentinel, first one to return to the base. We have the Atramenta Sergeant with a big gun in there. That's a lot of firepower coming forth from the Bastion. The Obliterator Squad's doing what they can. Might be now the time to teleport away. Just like they're giving it a go as well. Narrowly avoiding. Did I know that? Yeah, narrowly avoiding death with one model left to spare. Blade Raiders are being spotted by these guys. Over yonder, the Tau Barsa Enclave are bringing forth even more lads and lasses. One poor soul man. Oh, combat engineer being sliced by the commander himself. As the Renegades come forth for a second push over onto this side of the map. Over here, we do have the. Uh, Shogun up preparing for another, or should I say, a continued push towards the Night Lord's base. The tower with just pure commanders going on everywhere. Broadside heavy battles as well. Biggest guns you've ever done did seen. Not nearly enough firepower to take on the big tanks of the Shogun at the moment. And now they're pushing down over onto this side. Mr. Nurse Speak bringing forth some Furies just to cap some points. We have some snipper drones. And we've got Shah Shahai. How do one pronounce that? Is this enough to hold this guy this force back there? Karen Warriors come forth. Yeah the Raptor Scout squads aren't gonna be doing all that well here. It'll probably be down to the dreadnoughts. Both are well one's about armed with a last cannon, one's armed with a plasma cannon. Death and sadness. Here's a flowing Grey Spectres. Looks like they're all armed with grenade launchers, ominously just floating with perfect stillness in the air. Everything's been terror clawed down. Havoc's good for destroying infantry at range. So over here, attempting to continue the push, but they just don't have the staying power at the moment. They do the damage, but I mean, these guys can be replaced by. Um, well, it's just more of them. A lot quicker, I reckon. Shasphere, uh, up, uh, up, good lord. Nine, uh, that's what we call him. He's here. Doesn't seem like he's a bit more anti vehicle in nature. But, broadside battle suits falling. In fact, all, all the suits are falling as the push comes towards them. Land Raider Ferbus for the Night Lords. Quite a tanky piece of tank. But is it armed and armoured against all these flirty boys? Not entirely sure. But Decimus back out. Another hero for the Night Lords. No, struggling quite, quite somewhat. Oh, it's got Grand. Good, good lord, hold on. Hold on. 
do do you, you summon lightning and all oh, right yeah you summon basically some like an eldari kind of nonsense are you literally just pink haired oh my goodness she's the protagonist apparently slanesh of course she is oh, of course she is but things are happening and the night lords are not best pleased about it i imagine some more dudes being summoned forth he says i saw a symbol there there we go Sahai doing what he can as the actual mentor are back at it. If anything can kill these guys, it's gonna be these. Long spiky fingers also bringing forth a huge explosion from the Palace of Night, breaking the morale of anyone caught for the blast radius. And now these guys are falling in love. Oh no, don't fall in love with the anime gal. That never ends well. It never ends well, boys. Just Pay no heed. Anime girls are temporary. The fall of the Emperor of Mankind is eternal. Where are you sniper drones coming from? Are you just... Is that a strike fighter? Is that where you're coming from? Either way, the Tau been beaten by the Renegades. The Night Lords last to stand. Something tells me. They're not feeling the vibes. Yep, certainly not feeling the vibes at all. So it was a really unfortunate situation that uh, JL was not able to hold down the line here as the uh, Shogunate came down over on this one. Didn't quite have the uh, numbers to really hold back their Takaran warriors. Oh, te Takaran warriors. I'm just adding syllables for no reason. But really good showcase for the Farsa Enclave. Really able to uh, work together with those Night Lords to push into the Chaos Demon base. Not really being... I mean, the Chaos Demons did a, ph ph a phenomenal job coming down onto the far side of things and showing us what the Core Knight uh, Bloodletters could do against the primarily ranged uh, Breachers and whatnot. But no, that's that's uh, that's not the way it worked. And the Shogunate able to hold the narrow choke points of the beach here before slowly but surely pushing the tower back over on this side. So very nice stuff from all the players here. So thank you so much for sending the game in, boys. And if you want to support the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound a month because you want to game a week. And there is also a Discord, where Discord things happen. Link in the description as always. My name is Mr. Landshark. Pleasure as always, never chart. Now, see you in a bit. Peace.